Hey everyone, Banjo Jen here. Uh, welcome to the second tutorial um, in sort of frailing for complete beginners. Hopefully uh, you've been practicing from the first one. Um, if you're just starting out and you've um, you've got to grips a little bit with that basic frailing strum. Today we're gonna um, just build on that by adding a chord. Um, so we've got the G chord and another chord and then we can start to kind of um, play something that, that resembles a song, um, which I think is always really good because if you just spend forever doing technical exercises, uh, it could be quite easy to get switched off from that um, because it just sounds like technical exercises and it doesn't sound like anything recognisable. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll just do a little kind of tune um, just to mention a couple of things from last time, uh, I realised on the video um, that these things maybe stand out quite a bit um, and you might be wondering what on earth that is and why your banjo doesn't doesn't have these dots. Um, don't worry about them. These um, are from what's called a pickup. So because I um, play gigs, uh, it's good to be able to plug in um, to an amp or to a, a sort of PA system and so I have um, a, a pickup on the back of my banjo. This one is a Cavanjo pickup, um, which I highly recommend by the way. Um, so this kind of goes through the, the head of the banjo and picks up the sound from the strings and it also means that you see this kind of cable coming out um, if I'm plugged into an amp. At the moment I'm not, I'm just plugged into a tuner um, but you don't need um, you don't need a pickup, this is just for like if you if you're playing uh, out at gigs and stuff and you want to be able to be amplified um, for, for just playing at home or going to sessions or whatever um, you can just play acoustically you don't need to worry about um, a pickup but I just thought I better explain what that was because um, people might be thinking kind of why is there a cable coming out and what are those dots and my banjo doesn't look like that um, so that's that and um, like I say I'm going into an electric tuner which looks like this you might have seen something like that um, so that just helps me to stay in tune but like I mentioned last time you don't need one of those if your banjo doesn't have a pickup you can literally get a little clip on one um, that you put on the head of your banjo like so and you know you can you can tune your strings to, to what that says. Um, just to kind of get to grips uh, a little bit with learning to hear it yourself. Um, I mentioned last time you can tune a banjo um, by ear. So I just wanted to go over that in a bit more detail before we get started. So if you if you play your bass string, that fourth string up, the thick one, the bass one, that's your D. So if you get if you get that in tune to your D. What we've got along here are frets. Um, Apologies to, you know, uh, if, if we've got any uh, players watching that are used to guitars and sort of know all about this, but if you're just starting totally from scratch and, and you don't know what this means, these sort of spaces along the neck are called frets, okay? Um, and so if you count one, two, three, four, five, we call this the fifth fret, all right? So what kind of where your, your, your fifth string is. So on that, on that fifth fret, if you put your finger on that bass string, okay, so you're putting it down to the fretboard, you'll then get a G note when you play that string. And that should be the same as the next string down, because your next open string is a G, all right? So that should be the same. And then if you go to that next string down, which is your third string up from the bottom, and put it on the fourth fret and then play it, you'll get a B note, which could, should kind of be the same as the next string along. Might be slightly sharp because that's what banjos do a little bit on that string, but it should be playing pretty much the same note. And then your second string, if you go up to the third fret for your second string, you get in your high D note, which should be the same as your first string. So that's how you can kind of like by ear check that your banjo is roughly in tune. On your first string there, if you can fret that at the fifth, you get your high G, 
which should be the same as your fifth string, your high G sort of drony string. All right, so that kind of, um, yeah, just helps you to kind of recognize you're in tune um, and you, you know, have a go at using the tuner and doing it by ear and see how close you are. Um, I have to say sometimes, you know, although you might be exact on the tuner, it might sound slightly out still when you do it by ear and I always think it's better to go by ear and get it sounding right there um, when you're just playing for yourself, you know, if you're just playing at home that's that's kind of fine as long as the strings are in tune with each other it's fine. Um, obviously if you then go out and you're playing with someone else um, you've got to be kind of in, in good tuning and make sure that it is actually accurate because um, otherwise it's going to clash with who you're playing with. All right, so um, like I mentioned, these are frets, okay, and um, we're going to play chords along these. Obviously, we've been in open G, so we've got our free chord in open G, um, but we're going to now want to start putting other chords into the mix. So to begin with, we're just going to learn one chord in this tutorial um, because we can we can kind of use that then to play a little tune that continues the practice of that basic frailing strum that we've been doing that one and a two and a three and a four and a so hopefully you've been practicing that over and over and over again uh, you might be sick of it but hopefully it's bec it's uh, becoming a bit more natural by now um so the chord we're going to start with is d seventh uh, because it's quite an easy chord uh, it's just two fingers um and it's on these first two frets okay so with frailing, pretty much, you know, most of what we do is going to be on, on this sort of part of the neck, okay, what they call quite quite low down the neck, um, because it's it's very chord based. And obviously you can play chords up here, um, and, you know, we'll come to that, but a lot of what we do is going to be down this end. So first and second fret there, you're going to put your index finger on the second string at the first fret. So when I say second string, it's up from the bottom, okay? So your second string up from the bottom is gonna be fretted at the first fret with your index finger, and then your middle finger is gonna fret the next string, the third string, at the second fret. Okay, so that gives you a D7 sound. seventh because that first note you're holding down with your index finger is a C so we're putting kind of a C into a, into a D chord um, which gives it that sort of seventh sound um, and it works quite well for a lot of folk songs um, does a D seventh so it's quite a handy one just to learn to, to begin with because like I say it's not too complicated just two fingers and then you get a new chord all right I'm not going to go kind of into the ins and outs of the notes in chords uh, and the keys and different things. We'll, we'll maybe touch on that um, next time round. So all I want you to do now is to use that G chord and the D7 chord to practice playing a little tune so that you, you kind of practice in your frailing strum, but it's part of something that actually sounds a bit recognisable. <laughs> all right. So we're going to play Skip to Malone. I know that's probably not the tune that you're desperate to run out into the world and play to people, uh, but as a little kind of exercise to play for yourself at home, it works quite well for this. So we're going to just practice that strum again. So just get into the rhythm again. One and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a... Okay, so hopefully we've been getting used to that, we'll get back into the flow of that. Um, and maybe you've been trying to hit different strings, you know, it might be second string, third string, second string, first string. Any string you want really, you're in an open chord so you can hit any string and it's going to sound okay. What I want you to do is practice as you're strumming that, you're going to try and get that D7 chord and then do the same thing, just hit any string for now but just do that frailing strum and then let it go and go back to G and then go to D7 
seventh again. Back to G. Okay, and just do that a few times back and forth. At first, you know, if this is the first time you've ever played um, an instrument or whatever, you, you're going to find it a little bit difficult to just grab it cleanly there might be a delay you know you might be happily strumming in G and then <laughs> I did that for ages every single new chord that I learnt I had to like force my fingers and there was always a delay um, and that's just how it goes at first and it, it just gets easier the more you do it so we're going to put it in a little tune like I say skip to my loom so it would be, um, I'm just going to hit any string for now, just so we get an idea. Oh, there's a thunderstorm outside. Can you hear that? Sorry. Um, so I'm just going to hit any string for now um, in G and then D7. So it will be, lost my partner, what will I do? Lost my partner, what will I do? Lost my partner, what will I do? Skip to my loo, my dog. So you've just got your G and your D seventh chord there. If you can hear a bit of a beat, that's just my foot going. Um, that's one thing I would maybe suggest that you have a think about. Um, I like to hear my foot tapping because it gives me a beat to try and keep to. Um, I always find it quite strange when musicians don't tap the foot because I find it's sort of something I really have to do. It's part of the whole movement. But don't worry if uh, if, if you find that hard. I don't want you to start thinking about your foot, but you might find it's just kind of tapping along uh, naturally. <laughs> um, so yeah, just uh, if you can hear that, you can hear the thunder as well. Um, okay, so if you sort of practice that a little bit, back and forth, G to the D seventh, just on that simple tune, but then we can start actually hitting specific strings if you want it to actually sound a bit more like the melody. So I would suggest let's have a try at um, second string. So for your G, um, we're going to hit that second string first. So if you first know, second string, strum thumb, and then third string, strum thumb, back to second string, strum thumb, first string, strum thumb, strum thumb, even. Okay, so we're kind of going sort of second, third, second, first sort of back and forth like that. And you can hear that sounds like the tune. Lost my partner, I and then when you hit your D seventh chord for the next bit, you could do the same thing, but we'll move everything up a string. So maybe start on your, your third string this time. So you're going to do a third string, strum thumb, fourth string on that bass, strum thumb, back to third, strum thumb, second, strum thumb. Okay, so that'll be, um, uh, lost my partner, what will I do? Lost my partner, what will I do? Back to the G that we started with, do the same thing. Lost my partner, what will I do? And then maybe for the last D seventh, I would go third string, fourth string, and that's all you get because that's a shorter chord with the tune. Then you're going to let it go back to G and maybe finish it on that middle G on the third string. So that will give you something that sounds a little bit more like the melody. It's not note for note, but it's kind of rolling along with the melody. And it also gives you practice at trying to hit certain strings. However, at first, I would say, don't worry too much about that. I want you to run through it a few times, just playing the strum and not worrying about the strings you hit. Um, just sing along. I do think it's really important to sing along, even if you don't like your voice um, and, you know, you, you think, oh, no, you know, I just I just want to play. I don't want to sing. Um, the reason I would say start singing along right from now, right from the beginning is because it really, really helps to train your ear and to sort of uh, 
bring, bring your playing on faster. Uh, I honestly believe that it's something that um, uh, Patrick Costello, like I say, look up his channel. Uh, I learned so much um, at the start from him. And it's something that he always said, and I was really glad that he gave that advice. Um, so I'm gonna give it to, because if you're singing along, you, you train in your ear and your hand and the instrument and it's all coming together. Um, so just sing along with it. God, I think there's gonna be a right, it's a right storm. Can you hear the rain on the roof? Um, so let's try that, you know, do the second string, first string, second string, first string, and you're gonna grab your D seventh, move it up one, third string, bass string, third string, second string, back to G, second string, third string, second string, first string, D seventh, third string, bass string, back to G, middle string, G. When I say middle, I mean that third string, your, your middle G note. Okay, so that would give us, if you want to kind of play along, two, three, four, lost my partner, what'll I do? Lost my if you don't quite catch all the strings properly I mean I didn't there um, you know you don't always manage to get a really crisp clean strike on the string but I think you know that's not you don't need to worry about that too much at the moment it's more about just getting that frailing strum if you find that too difficult to think about the strings and it's taking over then just go back to not worrying about which string you're hitting and just worry about the fact that you're doing your strum and you're in the chord so we can go back to not worrying about the strings and just going lost my partner what'll I do lost my partner what'll I do lost my partner what'll I do skip to my loo my darling you know and don't worry about the strings you're hitting but if you sort of get to grips with that and the pattern's going well and you're in the rhythm then you can maybe start thinking about those individual strings so I'm going to leave you with that for now um I know like I say it's not exactly the most exciting tune in the world um but it's a really good one just to start you know getting to grips with that d7 chord grabbing it quickly from your g to your d7 get those fingers trained in grabbing those strings on the right frets at the right time <laughs> okay and just sort of play along to that tune for a little bit and then um next time we will learn the well actually i can show you the c chord now and then you can maybe practice it a little bit for next time um we're not going to put it into a tune uh, this time but uh but the next episode i'm gonna use the c chord the d7 that we've just done and obviously the open g and then we'll we'll do kind of a slow tune that we can play along to with the three chords okay so maybe um maybe it would be good to show you that at the end of this one so if you want to just kind of practice this for next time you're gonna grab the same second string first fret like we did for the d7 but this time your middle finger is going to come all the way over to the bass string, to the fourth string at the second fret. And then your ring finger is going to also on that second fret hold down the first string. Okay, so it's going to look something like that. All right, that gives you your C chord. Oh, beautiful C chord. Okay. So I don't want you to kind of worry too much about strumming that yet, but you can have a little practice at getting the fingers in the right place and we'll build on that a lot more next time. Um, so that's your C chord, okay? But for now, just kind of go to that D7 and just have a practice at going from G to your D7, okay? And uh, I'll see you next time.